Good evening. Good evening. How you folks doing? All right. Just a few announcements real quick. Uh, next Sunday we will have a prayer breakfast. Also, start praying again. Right, already started already. Praying for a revival. That uh, revival never not come to Jim Moss. So he ain't gonna bring it. That's right. You know, there's always, I always remember the, little, the ten little two-letter words. If it is to be, it's up to me. Uh, I've got to be a part of that starting just as much as anybody else, just as much as Brother Moss. He's going to bring God's message to us. It's up to me and us whether we accept it, take it, and use it every day. So pray for Him, pray for our hearts that we accept it, what He'll say to us, and then have that strength and courage each day to live it. <clears throat> Sometimes it's easy to listen to it and hear it, and it just stays right here. Right. You come down here. Enough of my preaching, have the preaching, not me. <laughs> Uh, retreat uh, it's just a retreat now uh, so if you're planning on going haven't signed up yet uh, put your name and uh, whether you're going to stay in the tent or in the lodge uh, how many nights you're going to stay we get to stay uh, again Wednesday night, uh, Thursday night uh, we, will gonna, we are going to have a men's meeting Thursday night at 6.30 no meal this time <clears throat> but we're going to talk about a couple of items uh, so uh, one is the is the food for the retreat, and also the the uh, the uh, driveway out there. So uh, as men get together, talk about that and uh, discuss all that. Uh, also uh, on the tenth, I forgot to mention this morning. On the tenth, uh, uh, that night, uh, the second Sunday, we'll have the McNeils here, and evidently they are a uh, well-traveled uh, a group, well known. So, uh, uh, be praying for them. I also got a flyer also given to them this morning that they will also be at, I think, Cedar, Cedar Crest. I'll have it next Sunday. The fall, on the 16th of March, the following Saturday. Uh, that's Saturday. I think 16th is a Saturday, right? Yeah, 16th. So I'll have that and write that announcement next Sunday also. Other than that, I think that's all. A few calendars left. Any more calendars left? Mm -hmm. She says yes, so if you ain't got a calendar like one, see Miss Lynn. All right, enough of that. Are you washed in the blood? Yeah. yeah. We're going to sing all four verses, number 136. We need the hymn book. Are you washed in the blood?
Brother Johnny, would you leave some bread, please, sir? Cross. We're going to sing all four verses. 141, you need a hymn book. That's where Jesus said it is finished. But if it wasn't finished, then he wasn't going to pray. 141. He just died on the cross. That was it. That was nothing to it. That was it. He had to die in the grave first. 141, go by the cross. Of Jesus, I fain would take my stand. All three verses.
Jim, Turkins, you need a prayer, please, sir. I'm up here at the Dudley Father, Lord God. Once again, we want to thank you for the opportunity to come freely and worship you tonight. Lord, I pray that everyone here is a blessing for hearing your word. Thank you, the Lord, for suffering, Lord. Serious thing. I'm not going to talk too much about this song. The word's going to say for itself. It's an old song, probably about 50, 60 years old. It's called Precious Blood.
Thank you, Brother Bill. Yeah. Amen. Amen. second of two ordinances that Christ gave the church. We started this morning with baptism and we finished tonight with, of course, the Lord's Supper. Uh, quite frankly, I did not <coughs> intend for that as I planned it, but it just worked out that way. Amen. And every once in a while it does. Amen. Um, I'm going to have you turn your Bibles tonight to the book of 1 Corinthians. We will also be in Isaiah 52, 53. And I just kind of tell you that just for expediency's sake. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, in just a few moments, we will start reading there. I want to, I'm not going to go into great length. Uh, we spent time two weeks prior to last year. Uh, Lord's Supper and examining these things and looking at the scripture. And, uh, but we do need to uh, cover some area before we actually observe the ordinance. The Lord's Supper is one of the capital T H E most important services of a church's year. It is not ritual. <clears throat> And not only is it not ritual, it's not to be treated or observed as ritual. And that, um, that far too often is the case. We will, of course, and, and as, we, as I read the verses here in just a little bit, but we as a church, what we're doing to tonight and what, we, what is happening through this ordinance is very similar to what occurs in a baptism. This morning, Jim, as he was baptized there, he is proclaiming to those that are watching, he is proclaiming his reliance upon Jesus Christ as his Savior. Amen. Again, in the death, burial, resurrection of Christ, but also in the death, the old man is gone of Jim Murphy. And then, so he's proclaiming that as a testimony. Well, in a very unique way, so do we in enacting or following the Lord in the Lord's Supper. You and I realize, and, 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 and we, Brother Bill just sang a song, again, that, again, centered on the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And again, his shedding of blood that made it possible that we be forgiven. Right? And so that's what this cup represents. And I say represents for a reason. And then, of course, the bread representing his body. But picture this, if you will. Whenever the plate is passed to you, what's in the plate is not a, a, a perfectly round loaf, is it? Is pieces. It represents the torn body. The torn body of Jesus Christ. The body that went through the process of, of excruciating torture, shall we say. Um, I'm always, to the best of my ability, which isn't much, quite frankly, Whenever I see someone come in here, particularly on Sunday mornings, because, I, because I'm, I'm, I'm aware of, of visitors and aware of people with people, and, um, and so I don't, I don't not say things. You hear what I'm saying? I don't not say things that might um, offend someone, but I do want to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit in, 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 in God using different things to convict. We had a, um, this morning, for instance, there was a Catholic here. And I knew that as soon as I saw her. And the, cat, the reason I'm bringing that up is, is because Catholics at Mass, their doctrine of transubstantiation, they literally believe 
that the body of Christ, that in other words, that you're literally drinking his blood and that you're literally eating his body when eating the bread. Folks, this is heresy. This is paganism, quite frankly, which Catholicism was born out of paganism. But anyway, I'm just, I'm just making that point to you, and it's so crucially important that we have a proper understanding of, of what's taking place here. In just a few moments, we're going to begin reading in verse number 23. But prior to Paul getting to that verse, he is rebuking the church at Corinth. The entire first letter is a rebuke unto this church. Because they had gotten so out of sorts doctrinally, okay, and, and again, allowed themselves. Sometimes we tend to say, well, Satan attacked and he caused this. Let me just, let me tell you something. Satan can attack, but he can never, never overwhelm the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of 1 John, he says, greater is he that's in me than he is in the world. Yep. Now listen, you and I will never be able to match up to the wits of Satan. Y'all understand that? but in the power of the Holy God. Now, it's not about us demanding that Satan do this and demanding him do that. It is absolutely 100% unscriptural for you or I to ever speak directly to Satan. Nowhere in Scripture. Nowhere in Scripture. You cannot command Satan to do anything. Amen. Okay? We're going to, the week after Brother Jim leaves, we're going to be in the book of Jude. And we're going to look later on. It'll take a couple of weeks to get there, but we're going to take a look there where one of God's archangels doesn't even command anything to Satan. Amen. Okay? You and I will never be able to match wits with him. Y'all understand that? It's not possible. So, well, man, what do I do? I'm, I'm, I'm attacked spiritually. I'm attacked spiritually. What do I do? You keep reading and you keep praying and you keep being obedient. Amen. That defeats Satan in your life. That's another reason why to memorize scripture, folks. Another reason. But Paul here is addressing something in verses 17 to 22 that's going on in the church there, and he's rebuking them for even observing the Lord's Supper because of what's going on in their church. Folks, if you don't have spiritual unity, you don't need to observe the Lord's Supper. Right. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and he rebukes them here for doing these things. Why? Because we make a mockery. We make a mockery of the ordinance, but we also make a mockery of what Christ did on the cross. So let's start our reading here, verse number 23. I'm going to read through this and I'll just make a few comments, and then I'm going to have our men come forward in just a bit. But in verse 23, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul says here, he says, For I have received of the Lord okay, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And what Paul is saying here is, is that the Lord, in other words, through special revelation, gave me exactly how we're supposed to do this, and he told me what had happened. Verse 24 says, And when he had given things, he broke it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, again, represent, representing, which is broken for you. Let's hold our place there in our reading, but let's, let's go now to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah, one verse in chapter 52 and then in 53. Isaiah 52, the prophecy of the future death of the Messiah on the cross. Chapter 52, this latter part here, particularly the verse we're about to read, specifically describes the body of Christ after, shall we say, the crucifixion and before the actual death. Verse number 14 of Isaiah 52. This, we, we, have, we have very little actual description of Christ himself in the New Testament, but in the Old Testament is quite a bit different. Verse number 14 says, As many, this is those that were watching, these are those that were, that were there at the crucifixion. Mother, the Mary of Jesus, the other ladies that were there, the crowd that was there. It says, as many were, and then you have the term there, astonied, 
And I'm sure, like, like me, many of you may have, the very first time you read that word, you thought, well, they left, they left the word I was supposed to have been astonished. No. It is similar to astonished, but it's, 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 it's much more powerful a, a word. Astonied at the, come back to that minute, his visage, in other words, what he looked at, what they saw. You've heard the term looked on in horror. That would be that would be similar, at least in understanding here. Was so marred more than any man, his form more than the sons of men. Okay, he was he was he was in all likelihood unrecognizable to his own mother. He was not some pretty little guy hanging up there with just a little speck or two of blood. He had been literally his body ripped to pieces. The word "astony" here is is means we have a term today we use petrified. Yeah. Was petrified at what I saw, and this is what this is describing. Because it just just nobody expected anything like this in that sense. So let's move to Isaiah 53. I'm going to start reading in verse number 3. It says, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now understand, this healing here spoken of here is not physical healing. It's spiritual healing. Because of his death on the cross, because of his uh, the crucifixion itself, the shedding of blood, we can receive the forgiveness of sin. There is no spiritual healing without forgiveness, folks. Verse number six then continues. It says, "All we like sheep have gone astray." You know, we none of us here can can point our finger at our at someone else and say, "Man, you messed up. You you strayed off, and you." Listen, folks, there's all been times. Amen. Certainly there's different degrees of that, amen? amen? But there's all been times when we've been out of the will of God, even as a child of God. It says, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath hid, laid on him, excuse me, the iniquity of us all. One more verse. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. You see, the whole time, the whole time, there in the, as he was in, in, the, in, the, in the trials, <coughs> as he was led from one place to another, as he was being beaten, scourged, as the crown of thorns was, was, was beaten down upon his head, he never fought back. He never told them that he never hollered that it was unfair. He never struggled. He never tried to get away. Now, I'm, wanting, I'm telling you this for another reason. Because in just a very few short weeks, we'll be in the Easter season. And one of the things that we're going to look at this year, approaching the day of the resurrection, we're going to take a look at the garden itself and the time of his prayer in the garden. And if you'll remember, the Bible tells us that his sweat were, as it were, great drops of what? Blood. And I want you to keep these things in mind, okay? Tonight, our purpose here, looking at Isaiah 53, at this last verse here, and the understanding that he underwent that, knowing that if he pulled away, knowing that if if he got away, understand this, there would be no substitute for Kyle Thomas Bryan. And put your name there. He willingly went to the cross as a sheep, 
as a sheep. Now, folks, sheep, some of the dumbest animals they are. Okay? They'll just walk, walk right to their death with a smile on their face, if you will. Okay? But Christ did it willingly for you and for I. Openeth not his mouth. Now, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 11. Mid part, verse 24 there, he says, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. He says, After after the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament, or let me, let me use a different word here. Again, it's in our minds. We need to be able to, to, to understand this, the New Covenant in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it. In other words, every time. Every single time you as a church observe this. This is a proclamation. As oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show, there's the word, proclaim the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily or in an unworthy manner, we'll get to that in just a moment, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. In other words, after examination. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep, literally are dead. The Lord's Supper is a very, very solemn, it's very serious. Because there's, again, another part other than the receiving of the cup and the receiving of the bread, and it has to be first self-examination. This is, this is just a, 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 this is the principle, shall we say, of worship. You and I, even apart from the Lord's Supper, it is absolutely impossible for us to worship God unless we humble ourselves first. Humble ourselves first. Paul used a, a term repeat. <coughs> excuse me. Paul used a term repeatedly, dying to self. And we understand that of course to mean that I've got to move myself out of the way for God to get the glory. But in this case, here, again, the examining, humbling ourselves before holy God, asking of God, this is what we, we, we've been doing. Um, for the past week plus, since we brought this up before, okay, is again in preparing for the Lord's Supper. There's more to it than just showing up, saying a prayer, and, and swinging it down. Amen. Now, I, don't, I, I do not mean to, to, to seem um, um, there in, in that sense of belittling, but oftentimes our attitudes are not right, and we are not prepared. You say, but we are to examine ourselves all the time. That's true. That's absolutely 100% true. The word worthy here, or unworthy, is used a couple of times in this passage. And this does not mean, okay, that we can become worthy to receive. No, that's not the meaning of the word. Because what? A human being, nobody will ever be worthy. Okay? unworthily in the sense that unprepared spiritually have not done what has been instructed here or what this is a commandment to search ourselves again for unconfessed sin before before the Lord and then take in a few moments whenever we start our preparation time before we before we actually start we're going to we're going to take a few minutes I realize that we've announced this week and things of this nature, but just we just want to make it sure in just a few minutes here that, that we, we do have a time of self-inspection. Okay. So here's what I'm here's the way I want to do this tonight. I'm gonna to ask our men to come forward. And I'm gonna have them fold, 
fold the linens, remove those, and y'all just place those over there on the, on the thing. As they're doing that, as they're even beginning this process, now would be a, a good time. We can go ahead, you can go ahead and, and, and bow your heads and, 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 and start praying, asking God to, to show you your heart, show you anything show you anything that would stand before you and he, anything that would cause you to, in, to, to not receive this and give him glory that he deserves, okay? So let's just, let's just take a few moments. We have one that's come here to the altar, and certainly this, this altar is open if you'd like to come as well. Um, we're going to just take a few moments and, and, and pray.
still reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 24. It says, When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, And then Christ himself speaks of again taking and observing. At this point, we're going to pause. I'm going to ask Brother John Thomas if he would lead us in prayer, thanking the Lord for his body. Our Heavenly Father, we are welcome to you. For loving us. Yes, God. Lord, we know that you are aware. And Father, we allow that sinner saved by the grace of God. Yes. And I thank you and I love you truly. Lord, we just ask you to be with each one of us as we go through the rest of the day. And Lord, we thank you for your joy. Christ then says, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. this time I'm going to ask Brother Mike to lick up if he would pray for us and, and, and thank him the Lord for his shed blood. Father, we love you. We thank you for the land to be able to serve tonight and take part in it. We thank you for the sacrifice that you made over 2,000 years ago, Father. The anguish and pain that you went through, the suffering that you went through. And we thank you for that, that when we had the opportunity to bring our life for you, so we just love you and thank you for what you Verse 25 says, After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he 
gets up saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. He follows up in verse 26. He says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show of him proclaiming the Lord's death till he comes. said as I started in, in our preparation time I talked about briefly about this being very solemn occasion and I think you'll agree with that <clears throat> because it's, it, it's something in recognizing and then in obedience to God doing it the way he says to do it God blesses us in obedience and there, may, there are things that shall we say seem a little bit Maybe a little bit I don't know, odd's not quite the word. But it's not just your usual everyday thing. But it's what God has called us to do. You and I have just now, by taking the bread and taking the cup, okay, we have proclaimed, we have given visible evidence of our love for Him. But as you know, it does not stop when we drink the last sip of the cup. It continues when we walk out that door. Every day, every day, every day, in front of the eyes of other people. Let's uh, just have a word of prayer and just be dismissed. Father, we love you. God, as both of these men here have, have said, Lord, we thank you so much for what you did for us on that cross. You came to this earth to die for us. You came to this earth first to live for us, that we might have a perfect example. And God, we praise you. Lord, we face situations in our lives, circumstances, different things, God, that that we that we are that we are powerless, God, Lord, to overcome. But God, you already have. And we pray, Lord, that we day by day we'd be obedient unto you and following, God, the things in which you command. Again, Father, we praise your holy name and we thank you, Lord, for your son's precious blood, the power of forgiveness in the shedding of that blood. And it's in his precious holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.